Well, this is part two of the Neil Peart <coughs> tribute podcast from D's Practice Pod. And <coughs> my guest today is Adam Pliss. And he is with a fantastic tribute band, Mystic Rhythms. And I saw these fellas play uh, back a few years ago um, at Paramount in Huntington. Uh, it was the plan to have him in um, months ago, but then uh, the world stopped. So um, he's here today, and we're going to have a nice conversation with him. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> Andrew, thanks for having me. Well, it's great um, to have you here. You know, yeah, under the circumstances, uh, uh, you know, I was tested. I, I don't know if you were, you know, everybody's been tested. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm well. I feel good. Knock wood. And, uh, thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate well, it's it. it's great to have you here. <laughs> so, the, be, because of the fact that you are um, playing the, the Neil role in your band, um, you are absolutely a a get to have on the tribute so let's let's get right into it well firstly um when did you first hear rush um interesting i was 13 years old i was already playing four years of flute uh in school and uh -huh. i a neighbor yeah, I went over for a barbecue or something, and he brought me up to his room, and there was a poster of Rush. And there was this beast of a kit, his original kit with all the bells, and it had all the bells and whistles, you know, like we, we joke. Right. And and they were in their robes. It was one of the older pictures. I, I don't know. I was 13, so I was born in 67. So it was 1980, so... You know, the the albums that they had at that time, uh, they, they had a poster, and I was just blown away. And I was um, it kind of a collage. Um, I just remember just being focusing on Neil. I remember seeing, uh, I, it may have been. I remember Neil like kind of the center of it and high up. Right. And then there was Getty. There was Alex. I right. I um, I just remember seeing this beast tubular bells behind this thing and he had this great mustache long hair you know yeah it was yeah you know, it was like he was the man you yes. know like All and right. he had a fan like uh, he had an expression on his face like he, he makes the greatest expression um and uh yeah and i think i was 13 years old and that instantly instantly had me tapping i was like oh my god i, I gotta tap and i just yeah. started to tap i never I, I well maybe i tapped my foot before but i i right. really wasn't drum inspired so so to speak until that picture literally it was that picture that all of a sudden in my brain i don't want to play the flute anymore i want to play the drums so that, that changed your musical life completely <laughs> completely right. wow. and 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 when i did go up to um i did hear xanadu that was the first song i ever heard and i never heard such a long song before wow. that was but my that, next question <laughs> xanadu that was it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm that, jumping. Oh, that's in, fine. <laughs> he just, uh, yeah, that's a great song. Again, their epic period, you know, <laughs> where the '70s yeah. was, you know, everything was uh, a story. Everything was longer. Yeah. You know, I I can't yeah. decide what stuff that they've done that I love the most. Um, but that that's the thing about Rush is that they have periods, and. Um, they weren't satisfied to be the same band for 40 odd years, you know? Yeah, wow, right. So, what was the first album you bought? Be believe it or not, that was a late bloomer when it came to really getting getting me um, into it. And I, I got to tell you, it was uh, Grace Under Pressure. But it was, you know, I, I was a really... <laughs> I started at 13 I was a late bloomer and I didn't play drums really well so I got into the electronic drums right, right away so I really appreciated the electronics that um, once Neil switched over and that was really when I just so got into uh, into Rush so that was probably another few years later 80 what was it 84 85 um, you know and then and then into the 90s I loved all the well uh, 
but uh, yeah, I guess um, I guess uh, it was really the electronic era, though, to me. That was such a. Um, I, I guess because I was such a bad drummer, so I could put on the headphones, you know, and right. really not make a loud noises. Right, okay. right, right. You know, I had tin can drums. My first drum kit was like a little you know, beat up used kid. And I, I yep. was just hitting stuff. I didn't know what to do. And I didn't have proper instruction um, at the time. Uh, so it, I, it took me some time to really understand the drums. So electronic drums really helped. I, I took to that. And then and then it came with different pre-programmed styles and stuff of other, other, other uh, genres, you know, samba, salsa, reggae, you know, so that kind of helped too. But um, sure. yeah, anyway. But that's that's uh, that's interesting. Um, how many uh, times did you see them live? Um, let's see. I uh, I saw them the, f the f one of the first early shows I went to see them was in Florida, the Sunrise Musical Theater, and I think it was sixteen or seventeen, and there was a riot there. Uh, a big riot happened. I, I I think I think the story was Rush was late or something may have happened to their equipment, so they didn't they didn't open the gates and they wouldn't let anyone in. And I just remember rioting and then police and 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 I think Rush banned them from coming to that to that show. So I remember going down to Miami and seeing them. So there was a Miami gig that I saw. That was I think my first gig that I saw. Um, and uh, the last one, one of the most beautiful one, was up in Montage Mountain uh, in Scranton, PA. What a beautiful place to see. Uh, yeah, I've not been. A, a rush show. Um, but I've been to, uh, to, 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 I guess, um, since the Grace Under Pressure tour, um, I've seen them. So. Okay. Um, so for, like, each tour? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I, uh um let's see i uh yeah boy i'm drawing drawing a blank now thinking of it but uh yeah i've seen them maybe about 15 16 times i guess wow. more than a dozen times well, that's great but uh yeah i've had an opportunity to see them you know a couple tours a couple times a tour um and the last one was uh time machine um which was just uh was that was it time machine that was the last one. Yeah, like anyway, the, the clockwork angels tour yeah clockwork angels yeah that was that's the last time i saw them i so didn't beautiful. i didn't get a chance on their their 40th anniversary tour right i saw them on the 30th but not the 40th and right. uh, you know that kind of stinks because then we found out that uh um there was going to be no more rush and you know mm. i i always held out hope because of the the little drought from 97 when when you know Neil had all of that terrible stuff with his family happen yeah and 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 he just uh, so yeah and and he took that sabbatical um and then, but then he came back you know i figured he might vapor trails yeah. that was so great wow yeah yeah um, yeah a nice uh a nice comeback you know and, and that so was just, yeah, that was such a great tour, too, when it came back to, um, but, uh, yeah, I think it was a rough time, right, with interviews and everything. Everybody wanted to chat with him, but uh, it was a little... Uh, yeah, and we all know that he was a very private guy, and he really didn't yeah. like, you know, he, he I didn't don't think that he was necessarily opposed to interviews, but, uh, you know, a personal, uh, a personal... That's the word I'm looking for. I'm drawing a blank, too. <laughs> yeah, just a tough, tough scenario. You know, yeah. Getty and Alex said, you know, hey, you know, you know, because he wasn't really showing up. I think when they did uh, the Brazil inter interview, when they did, uh, uh, yeah. what was it, Russian Rio? Yes. Um, yeah. You know, I think there was a little shy on, you know, hey, um, we don't really want Neil in the spotlight to really kind of, we're afraid everybody's going to kind of ask some questions. It might be a little awkward, you know. Well, they were um, sensitive to his, you know. Yeah. They, well, if you if you watch that thing that they that they did uh, ten or so years ago, that um, rock behind yeah. the lighted stage. The lighted stage. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you know that uh, um, they they used the line from. Uh, is it, I I 
I can't pretend a stranger is a long-awaited friend. And he said, that's Neil. That, that's, you know, he wrote it because that's the way he felt. Right. You know? And Limelight being what Limelight is, I guess he had a problem with it um, constantly. Mm. You know? Boy, can you imagine having as much adoration as that guy did <laughs> and having a problem with it? <laughs> you know, at least you don't get a big head. Yeah. You know? But um, um, if you could ask Neil a question, because you know you've really had to get into his brain, being as what it is that you do is try to replicate all of his, you know, his his, his musical efforts. But you also must read the lyrics because they do sort of inform what the drum part is. Yeah. So you're really yeah. in his head. If you could ask him something, what would you ask him? No, it, yeah, interesting. Just how 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 is his parts come up, you know? And and but you know, I've read a lot of stories um, on you know, like Ghost Rider. Um, I was able to read that, and uh, yeah, I read I, that. Uh, um, what a great great uh, story. But um, I know he had travels and stuff. I guess that's where he was inspired. But I always wondered how he come up came up with some of the lyrical parts, right? Mm. Um, that was one of the one question. I, I uh, the others were, you know, why the left hand or why, you know, it's interesting watching the videos um, uh, that he has. He spoke about when he was doing the Counterparts album that he had all these cool percussive ideas and using um, real acoustic hand drums, you know, uh, conga um, and djembe and stuff behind his kit, mm -hmm. but the songs didn't call for it and i always like wondered about that question wait, it's like wait a second you know it's so interesting he he has he he wrote these lyrics or he, he's designed drum parts and i'm not sure how he wrote i mean he explained a little bit a few times how they wrote like uh he would send getty and getty i thought at, at certain times of in the 90s maybe was sending him drum machine parts or something i i wasn't sure but i know a lot of the parts are just um you know came from from him i mean you know right. you know his heart his his soul and uh just always wonder yeah how do you you know the uh, some great hemisphere fills and you know you know like what the how does this you know the fill for tom sawyer where did that come from and why you know like and and how did how did you fit that I, yeah just yeah i guess multiple questions if i had one question um wow i i uh, that's a really tough that's a great question well for but a I guy yeah i i, I realize it, it's a total a order to answer that one considering the fact that you know he was a cerebral guy and he is as respected as he is in the musical community it is tough to narrow it down to one question but yeah. um yeah. Um, good one. Uh, yeah, I, you know, everything runs through my head, you know. Like, I, I had questions about, you know, when he was wearing the bandanas and, and why, and then it was answered, you know, to keep the sweat out of his his eyes. And, right. and I thought, wow, that's really genius. Yeah, when I wear a hat, you know, it does help to, to not sweat so much into my eyes and sure. stuff. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, and, um, that's a long show. <laughs> you know, it's a long show, especially doing what what has to be done for yeah. that show. You got a lot of, you know, if if you were if you were in a little jazz quartet, it, it would it would be tough because of the fact that um, you have the stage lights. But yeah, he's, he was he was getting some aerobics done up there. Oh my gosh, yeah, and he, yeah, you know, yeah. I guess he had to really work out too, ride his bike and uh, and get some exercise behind yeah. that. Yeah. I know I did to, to attempt to uh, play some of the yeah, songs. Yeah, to get Man. stamina to do what you oh, have to do, sure. It's not easy. Just playing, you know, 16th with Tom Sawyer. Come on, you know. And playing it smoothly and comfortably so, you know, it's like done right. You know, yes. that's really hard. It is. <laughs> For it is. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Um, it's, it, well, again, from, from, that, uh, from that one documentary, it says, I'll never get tired of playing Tom Sawyer. Because it's really difficult to play, and I feel good every time I get it right. <laughs> it, yeah, that's you the know, guy I, that wrote it. <laughs> that's that's funny. When when I travel to rehearsal, 
to to practice the rush material with the guys I, I i travel it's a good hour to get there so i have some time and i always want to do my rudiments and warm up before i practice right. you know and play because we're playing at now we're playing and we're playing and trying to do the songs right you know this isn't or work you know so i would once i'm playing tom sawyer so i have a free hand and i use one stick and i play on the seat next to me and by the time I'm there, I'm comfortably warmed up because I'm just doing Tom Sawyer fill, you know, right. just that 16th, you know, just playing with one hand. And, um, you know, I'm working all day and then I go and usually it takes me about an hour to really feel comfortable and warmed up and ready to go. So um, that's one of the songs that I would use to, to once I know that my, you know, the rudiments are smooth, you know, the 16ths are nice. and Right. It's, it's a good it's a good litmus test to make sure that yeah. everything's being played yeah. evenly and smoothly yeah and that's the um, name of the game with this stuff if it's not smooth it's it's obvious and it's gonna be a train wreck boy and it's funny you know his latest videos you know show him practicing you know warming up before he rehearses and and i think it was getty that mentioned you know he's the only only person i've ever known to really warm up before he you know he practices to just to practice and then you know so he's he's limber and he's warmed up and ready to you know, ready to go. I guess he always liked to come prepared. It, it looked like Neil always really was on point. I, yes, I, I think. Yeah. Well, it really mattered to him to, to make sure <laughs> that he could do it the proper way. You know, <laughs> that and the fact that he probably had this arthritis situation for a little longer than uh, than maybe mm. he'd let on. And and yeah. if, if you know anyone with arthritis, you know that the key to not becoming a stone is to keep moving. You know, right. and, and just to, yeah. to loosen up before you do anything that's going to require um, some real effort. Yeah. You know? Oh, boy. Totally. Yeah, do, you, um, do you have any specific memories of his playing, like either when you saw him live or there's something specifically in a song or a group of songs that, that, um, that you hearken back to on a, on a regular basis? You know, really, I was fascinated with Power Windows. I was fascinated with Mystic Rhythms, and hence the name of the, the project, Steve, myself, and, you know, Paul, we, we got together and, and did. Mystic Rhythms, to me, was the most fascinating thing, uh, um, really, to me, and, and the main reason why it's... I feel that the bass drum is the hook. So the bass drum is playing quarter notes and it hooks everyone. Naturally, as a human, like we get hooked onto something and I think it's an easy hook. I just found it fascinating watching him play in a vest because I, I, you know, the, when the video came out, it was like, what? Yeah. And I was really very impressed with the combination of electronics and it just really stood out to me. Um, and uh, I was blown away. I, I, to say the least, uh, every, you know, like most everybody. Yeah, like, like we all were. <laughs> well, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and it's weird. I my it's just I I for some reason and it's and it's you know and it goes down really because I I I didn't have confidence with drumming. I wasn't a good drummer when I was watching Rush and Neil play, and I didn't know what I was doing really. So I had the chance to hide that with electronic drums and I took to the sounds in the of the electronic drums and I thought it was fascinating and then when they he started I mean you know it was happening this is the 80s you know it, it, right. electronics were coming out keyboards and it was just I, I if I wasn't a drummer I would have turned into a, a piano keyboard player because I'm fascinated by the sounds and and the the ambient effects I, I know Alex was a little against it he's like hey what am I supposed to play <laughs> yeah it's, <laughs> Which, it's, it's funny <laughs> <laughs> um, I my uh, the first album I picked up actually was Signals. Gotcha. And, and that's yeah. at the time where uh, the keyboards actually started to pick up, and and he started taking the back seat. And from <laughs> from the time I got that album, I I immediately started going to their back catalog, and then I realized exactly how insanely good Alex was as a guitarist. Um, and how uh, how much the band had changed, but that, that's one of the things. Though the band had its periods, and they it's it's one of those rare bands where each album was so different that you could almost, if all of the 
songs were splayed out onto the floor. Just by listening to the songs, you could categorize them into what album they were on. Mm. You know? Uh, but, um, but yeah. Um, and, and you notice if you, if you collected some of the live stuff that uh, initially Neil's drum solo would sort of be sort of the same solo, but then just be added to. You know, like if you go, if you if you if you listen to all the worlds of stage, and then you listen to um, exit stage left, it's clear that there are parts there that are the same because he actually he wouldn't just wing it. It was something that was prepared. You know, it was actually yeah. written. You know, very orchestral. Um, and some of those things, even even years later, you know, again, you know, time machine. You know, it, it would, uh, it would, it would just be added to. Um, he was a very interesting guy in the fact that he was never really satisfied. You know, he never fell into a comfort zone. He was always looking to improve. You know, and I, I think we, we could, we could do with more of that. You know, from, from more. Uh, musicians, look, I, I I love an ACDC song just as much as the next guy, but <laughs> they're pretty much the same songs. A A B A rock stuff, mm. you know, not a hell of a lot for us to chew on. I wonder if the push from the industry kind of helped uh, helped tone them out a little bit in the direction that they chose to go, or would they have come up with that those songs anyway without the um, uh, the uh, big producer, big money guy is looking for them to play more pop songs, right? Isn't that uh, what they what they were wanted to do? And uh... it's certainly the direction that they wanted to push them into. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, you know, they, they they had the they had the original uh, self titled album, and it seemed like that was the direction they were going to go into. And then as soon as John Rusty was out of the picture, and they mm. put Neil into the seat, it was an entirely different band immediately and they were already not happy with where it was going and right. two two albums went by um, mm. Fly By Night and Caress of Steel and uh, it just seemed that things were you know going in the wrong direction and then when 2112 came out yeah, um, and it was a surprise that people actually um, identified with it and that's what really Save them from just being another one of those rock bands, which they might have been a one-hit wonder. They might have just simplified things, and maybe they would have had uh, a similar amount of success, but they would have been a very much different band, and we would have we would have lost something very special because of that. Mm, right. Yeah. Oh. Wow. <sighs> well, you know, yeah. um, I, I pretty much asked you what what I wanted to ask. <laughs> um, uh, I could sit here and talk to you all day um, because uh, you're, you're a great player. I mean, you, you're, you're, always, uh, you're always downplaying how well you play, but in order to play what it, what it is that's required um, to be in the band that you're in, it's a tall order, you know? <laughs> and and uh, so you're, you're a great drummer. And um, uh, I'll tell you, you guys really play the songs the way they should be played. Um, That's very it's kind a of tremendous, you. Thank you. It's a tremendous show that you do. You know, and, we're and like I'm, you. We're, we're fans. That's you know, we're fans, and it's just just from the heart. I, I I had the opportunity to 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 you know really kind of privately take lessons from Neil, and that was really my secret little thing that I I always did. I always just I watched and watched like a hawk, and I just took a liking to to him as a person his style you know the music the lyrics that came out and uh right. um and you know it's funny because the first number of years that i was watching rush i never i didn't know that um neil was writing anything <laughs> you know right. i think a lot of people uh, maybe didn't know that i surely didn't know that um and i uh, was blown away once i learned a few years into into being a fan that he wrote the lyrics um I don't know if I told you my Howard Ungleiter story. No. Um, 
so in the in the nineties I started getting into lasers. So I was doing like laser lights, you know. Little little parties and you know, sweet sixteens and you know, DJing and doing kind of laser stuff. And I wanted right. to, you know, meeting Steve uh, Longo, mm -hmm. the guitarist for Mystic Rhythms, um, I, I had the ability to do graphics with the laser, you know. Um, oh, cool. So I I had Running Man, you know, like uh, Digital Man, you know, they got the running guy, he's running. Yes. Um, and I had that, and uh, I had all these different cool little things I made. I did a, uh, a tribute to my wife, little thing back then, and it was um, Different Strings, you know the song. Yes. Um, so I made a, a little thing, and I made a show to, you know, a show to the song. It was, you know, three minutes or so, is it? So it was a short song. That's cool. And um, I decided, you know what, I, I got to find some some Rush stuff, see if I can find some logos on the internet. So I did some searching and I found a company, it said Rush logos and whatever. So I called it and I said, hey, I am looking for, um, you know, some designs and patterns that I could use in my program to make some Rush shows. So she said, hold on please. And then uh, uh, a guy gets on the phone and hi, my name's Howard, how do I, how can I help you? And I'm speaking with him for 10 minutes, not knowing I was speaking with really <laughs> Howard Ungleider. Okay. Wow. He's like, who's this? Hi, my name's Adam. You know, I have the Pangolin software. He's like, oh, really? You got Pangolin, top of the line. I was like, yeah, you know, we're chatting. And uh, I said, yeah, you know, I'm in a Rush tribute band and I'm looking to do, you know, to make some logos to the songs and stuff. You know, I already have one for different strings. He's like, really? Send it to me. So I sent it to him. And he was doing a show. This was the Vapor Trails tour, their first show wow. when Neil came back. Sure. So he was doing the show up in Montage Mountain. And he said, hey, Adam. Um, you know, we're looking for a laser guy. You're looking for a job? And this, <laughs> and I was like, what? yeah. Uh, so he's like, hey, meet me an hour before the show. And I had tickets to the show. I went over there and I met him. Uh, he was, you know, he was a little late. They had some technical issues. So I'm waiting up front and I go and I finally chat with him. And, uh, oh my God, I was blown away. I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, I don't know. What, what do I do? What do I so, but he, he, he did ask me a question. First off, really nice, nice gentleman. Oh man, was I blown away. He's a busy guy and he knows a lot about lighting, I'll tell you to wow, say the least. Yeah. He's designed sets not only for Rush, but for, I don't, I don't know how many bands he's done stuff, but he's designed his own like lighting board. He played this thing like a piano, man. It was just unbelievable. Um, but he, they were looking for someone who knew how to repair lasers and I don't know anything about repairing anything. I could just know how to use the program and software and set it up and, sure. and you know, and asked if I had backup and I didn't have any backup too. You know, I spent whatever I could on purchasing a $8,000 laser. Yeah, <laughs> shit's wow. so expensive at the time. Um, so I didn't get the job, but he, he, he let me spend the whole, uh, with two of my friends and my wife, the whole show at the board uh, with him. And I sat right, uh, stood right next to him as he played the board and the lights and and I was just blown away it was the most um, I was it was such a fantastic feeling uh, just sitting there with the crew and watching them work and put on show and I was right next to him it was just I was blown away and uh, when the show ended uh, obviously you know like I think a lot of people when the show ends you know you all of a sudden you get tears because you connect with that music that music is so yes. connectable and I don't know how anyone cannot fall in love with the material. There's so many albums out and so much material. You have to love at least a dozen of the songs because there literally are different types of genres in, in there sure. besides their progressiveness. Yeah. I mean, there's jazz, there's laid back, there's ambientness, there's everything in my opinion that ever, hence the numerous bands that have replicated and dedicated their their comments as well on their albums dream theater foo fighters you know these guys you know right. we know that uh, danny carrier uh, tool has quite an affinity also look I, and... I so appreciate you making those kind words you know i'm a fan like everybody else and and it, thanks a lot for showing up to the shows that you the show that you did i had a chance to play three times at the paramount and those were the best three shows i've ever had despite oh. some of the technical uh, difficulties i surely admit <laughs> yeah i was i was went uh, down. i was there at that that one night where the fire alarm went off. <laughs> I, I heard that the bar stool hit the fire alarm and the fire yeah. alarm went off. Perfect storm. They put it in exactly it, the wrong place. It was uh, just about head height and somebody must have leaned the, back. After the fire chief came and gave us back uh, the okay to play, I think we opened with Xanadu, I think. And uh, 
Okay. During that time, anyway, by the way, it was my birthday, and and I remember, everybody yeah. stood up. They sang happy birthday to me. It was such a great, yeah, it was great. just a great honor. Thanks, thanks for being part of that crowd and, and that night. That was really a fun show. Well, you know, when you guys ramp it back up again, and you're going to be in the area, um, please let me know. I'd love to see you again because now you're you're uh, the only game in town <laughs> because. <laughs> You know, it, not not only are you a great uh, tribute band, um, but you're gonna have to be the ones that that carry it on because obviously the band can no longer be since uh, Neil has yeah. passed. And yeah, you know, it's a yeah. You know, here's like two of them. Right. You know, it's tough. Get, yeah, it's tough. Uh, it was very sad and still sad and um, and. Uh, I, can, I can't believe it's over six months already. Imagine, uh, I hope his family is just all well and healthy. Yes, and, and yes. That's just yes. Uh, all the blessings go out to them, you yes, know. Yes. Um, but I definitely miss, and I surely, like the rest of us, miss, you know, the music, the shows. Oh, my God, how many shows did they do? That's why, you know, and, and right. the other thing is live bands and recorded albums, they were amazing live. I mean, amazing live. There are bands yeah. that just can't do what they're doing, and they... <laughs> you know, and and kudos to you know to all three of them, but you know, Getty man, you know doing all those parts, man, that, she's, that's yeah. amazing. You it's know amazing. what I mean? Yeah. Neil writing the lyrics and stuff, you know, and Alex filling in in the whole soundscape and and just being part of the the three of them was just man, I it, you know, and uh, it, it's nice to get to know you um, because of Rush. Um, yes. and that's uh, in between Rush is us, right? right? So that's kind of a <laughs> it's kind of a cool thing. My friend Steve Longo mentioned that. That's a I very cool. Yeah, I'm stealing that cool. one. <laughs> uh, anyone, I, I I have to say, any anyone I've ever come across that knows who Rush is, is really really uh, a cool person, and they uh, they I don't know. It always seems to be a connection. Um, there. Yeah, you know what what you do like as far as artistic expression goes, really does say a lot about you. And the, the Rush fan, and the fan of Neil, you know, be, be, particularly because we are drummers, um, we're, a, we're a pretty exclusive club, um, but, um, but we don't exclude anyone. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, well, I, uh, I thank you for uh, having having me on your show thanks for the uh for the chat it was really much fun and um, it's always fun talking to you um thank you andrew um and uh also i, I saw some of the the names that you you have interviewed you have some really <laughs> you have some really name uh some big drummers uh that you've uh you spoke with man there's some really uh cool pe people I'm well I, I was with. i was fortunate to um uh meet some of these people firstly through um, Al Miller my teacher of so many years and and through the Long Island Drum Center um, being as Long Island really is a hotbed for drummers and, and musicians in general because we are a suburb of New York City uh, gotcha. it's, it's it's so it, it's so great to be able to and there's there's other people that I would I would love to be able to talk to I just gotta find the right um, the right person to rub elbows with to <laughs> to get that. Oh, to good luck with that. Oh you man, know? are you kidding? You, you got you got great recordings already, and uh, some really great trumpets. Well, thank really you. Good. I I I I'm, I'm glad you've been enjoying because I'm I'm getting better at it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, keep I'm, doing it. I, you know. Well, um, that's that's it. You know, yeah. and right now I'd I'd love to be able to do it more, and maybe even at some point monetize it um, because then it could only get better you know but um, in the meantime I'm just having a blast talking to great guys like you <laughs> and um, uh, and I, even if I never make a dime doing it this is a labor of love uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be able to speak to guys like you excellent so all right well this has been um, these practice pod and my guest again has been Adam Pliss, and it's always great to talk to you, and I talk. I hope to talk to you in the near future. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right, my friend. Thanks a lot. Andrew, take care. Take care. See ya. Bye-bye.